Hi all, so today in class, we're gonna cover what's known as trigonometric substitution or trig sub if you will. Now, this is where we're really gonna start flexing some of our integration muscles. Not because these problems are any more challenging than the integrals we've been doing, but really just because they tend to be a little longer than the problems we've been doing in terms of integration. But we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But what I just want to say, some of our learning objectives for this uh, segment is really reviewing a lot of our trig identities as well as right triangle relationships with trig functions. So like what is sine in terms of the parts of a right triangle? What is cosine, tangent, cosecant, all of that jazz? We're also going to be necessitating practice of some of our basic algebra rules. And the basic algebra rules we'll see a lot of times involve square root type operations. So the big idea of what we're going to use trig sub for are for these types of integrals that you see on the right hand side of the page here. All of these integrals involve square roots and trig sub really is a method that helps us compute integrals that involve square roots because many times these integrals are impossible or very difficult to do otherwise. So the big ideas for today, we're gonna to learn how to do trig substitution. Um, bits and pieces of today will feel like the opposite of what we did for U substitution in terms of we let U equal something, we found DU in terms of DX and all of that stuff we're gonna solve kind of the other way for trig sub. We're gonna introduce kind of more complicated looking functions into our integrals, those functions being all trig functions. And by doing so, we're gonna see we're able to get rid of square roots. So some things to watch out for are knowing what we are integrating with respect to. We're not gonna integrate for example, like these integrals all on the right-hand side here, we're integrating with respect to x in each of them. When we introduce our new variables, we're gonna be integrating with respect to a new variable. So we'll get to do some differentiation for that change of variables as well. All right, and the reason why these problems feel a bit longer than the integrals we've been doing, there's kind of three big parts to trig sub. The first part is, we just need to recognize what substitution to make and actually perform that substitution on the original integral. And the long and the short of it, what's gonna help us out are trig identities. Namely, the trig identities that involve those Pythagorean relationships. So this is where we start seeing things like sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. One plus tangent squared equals secant squared. We're gonna be playing and shifting around those trig identities to help us out for trig sub. The next part of this problem inherently involves actually computing our trig integrals. So you might be wondering, why did we do all those trig integrals in the preceding section? Well, this is why. We're gonna see those types of integrals pop up during trig sub problems now. And the last thing we need to do is convert back from our integration variable in terms of our trig function back into the original variable, which would be like on the right-hand side here, putting our answer back into the x variables. So we're gonna do one of these examples in the next video, but what I wanna do is sort of tell us what we're looking for in terms of these Pythagorean identities. So <clears throat> at this point, what I recommend is actually just going ahead and doing the following. We take our first identity, that's sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And what we're actually gonna do is just solve for cosine squared. So we have cosine squared of theta equals one minus sine squared of theta. Our second identity that we're going to use extensively is the second one that's highlighted right now, the one plus tangent squared equals secant squared. Now, the way that we can view this is, I'm just gonna flip the order of this identity. So our identity could be viewed one of two ways. We can view this as either secant squared equals one plus tangent squared, which is what we originally have on that identity worksheet. Or we could also view this identity the other way in which we solve for tangent. So we have tangent squared theta equals a secant squared theta minus one. Now you might be wondering, 
why did I go through the bother of solving for some of these trig functions? Well, the form of these identities will kind of tell us which trig substitution we actually make. So for example, if I just bring up one of our original integrals here, which just going back was x over square root of x squared plus one. Remember, what we're trying to do is get rid of the square roots in that integral. So if we're looking at what's underneath the square root, it's that x squared plus one term. So the way in which I try to view these things would just be looking at this like, well, I have this as x squared plus one. And if you'll notice up above in our trig identities, we see these kind of plus one terms, minus one terms and things like that. So the other way to kind of view this would be sort of um, half, uh, half um, eyes, half closed would be sort of like what we have is some term squared which I'll just write blankly as some parentheses squared plus one. So what I'm looking for in a trig identity is some trig function squared plus one. So if I start marching through these, well, this identity has a one minus something squared, so that's out. This identity has a one plus tangent squared. This certainly looks plausible. The next identity is a secant squared minus one. We don't have a plus one here. So this identity looks like it's out. So what we're doing is trying to then match that identity to the form of what we have underneath that square root. Shift this over. And what we can see then is, well, if I want a one plus something squared, what I need then is inside those parentheses, I need to have a tangent. So the substitution we'd actually make in this case would be that we let x equal tangent theta. So we'll continue with this in the next video, but I just wanted to show us sort of the process of getting started, how we start thinking about matching trig identities to the form that we see underneath the square root. Check out the next video to finish this solution.